I'm Jay Horton. I make movies that make money, and this is Filmmakers On. Today, I'm talking to a filmmaker that has successfully crowdfunded over $100,000 for his first feature on eBay. You heard that right, eBay. Flavio Alves, he did it. Stay tuned to find out how he did it. Let's do the interview thing. The first thing I want to ask, because I was reading the, uh, the press release for it, and um, so did I read this right? You raised over a hundred thousand dollars in crowdfunding using eBay. Yeah, I, wow. I did. Yeah. Can you, can you tell me about that? Well, you know, um, as a filmmakers, you know, we have to reinvent, reinvent ourselves. You know, we have to create other ways to survive in this business. And I wonder, I have done different crowdfunding uh, campaigns. You know, with um, Indiegogo, uh, uh, Kickstarters, and. Uh, and then the, I found that uh, it was very easy in the early stage when I started working on it. You know, I had my network, you know, I, I, I could go to and ask for money, you know, but I became tougher and tougher as I moved on because first, a lot of people, they thought like, okay, I already helped you once or twice, you know, why should I keep helping you with every film, every film you make, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I saw people stop donating money or reduce the amount of money they were donating. And then second, it, there are so many projects out there for people to donate money to, you know. So uh, I get a lot of uh, requests, you know, and uh, for money through, you know, crowdfunding campaigns, you know. So I thought that uh, it became tougher and tougher. My first project, the first time I did the Kickstarter, I raised, uh, I think, thirty four, thirty five thousand dollars. Then became twenty, uh, you know, twenty four, twenty five. Then, um, then twelve thousand dollars. And then I was like, okay, if I keep doing it, it's gonna get a time that I'm not gonna be able to raise the money at all. You know, so I it became tougher and tougher. Then I had this idea um, that actually I found by accident by selling uh, donated items on eBay because I had a lot of for my previous film which was a short film. I had a lot of props that uh, I decided to sell on eBay. And I was so surprised how, on how fast I sold those items on eBay. Then I thought like, oh my God, I could sell other things around my office, you know? And, uh, and then I was like, uh, bingo, uh, I think I can raise the money, you know? I can raise money for my next film on eBay. And, uh, but I, it took me a little while because I have to first understand how the system works on eBay to make sure that I was not doing anything that uh, you know was illegal, but also how I could uh, tie it with my fiscal sponsor, you know, fiscal sponsor, which was New York Foundation for the Arts. And then I had this discussion with them how we could, you know, um, for all the items donated, people actually could get a tax you know, credit. It was 100% tax deductible. Um, mm. Every donation people gave to us, you know, and... Uh, so that's how then we create a website. Then we have to pick a name for the for the for the campaign, which and then we found this beautiful name, which eBayMyFilm.com. <laughs> and uh, then we create a website to explain to people how the system worked. Because with the Kickstarter and in Indiegogo, you they had this platform where people could understand. You now, okay, you donate this. You know, this amount of money, that's what you get as a perk, you know. We didn't have, we don't have that on eBay, you know. Mm-hmm. So we create a system and are saying, okay, guys, if you give a, donate a bunch of items to them, according to, to the amount of money we raise on eBay, you know, with your items, we're going to give you uh, a different perks, you know. Yeah, so we, we start some very small on in New York, was in New York uh, City only. And I have a small office to storage everything, but, uh, and I became very successful because once the word went out and then we went to TV, different places talking about the campaign, we started getting calls from everywhere. And then we have to get bigger than bigger and then bigger office, you know, <laughs> because we had, at, you know, at, at one point we had over a thousand items on eBay. You now, then we decided to sell cheaper, a lot cheaper than, you know, other people for the same items, you know, and uh, so that to, the item could come and go quickly, then more items would come, you know. Then we also got a lot better a f- few weeks later because in the beginning we were struggling with, uh, 
okay, how can we, for example, would you know how to, we have to learn how to best describe an item on eBay or best take a, you know, a photo, you know, in a certain way, you know, what kind of photo and how to take a, the proper uh, photo for each item. No? Also have to learn a lot on how to pack the item because it's, you can save so much money by, you know, shipping it with the proper, in a proper way. And, um, but also in a safe way that, uh, you know, the item will not broken in the, pro you know what I mean? On the, sh during the shipping process. So, so we had the best way was to get the different people doing different things because it became specialized. So, mm -hmm. so I had one person describing the one or two you know, people describing the items that mm -hmm. was coming. I have another person uh, packing, you know, another person taking the package to the post office or to the FedEx. And I have another person taking photos. We had an umbrella. We have a little in the corner of the office. We had this little umbrella. Looks like a you know photo shoot uh, you know office, <laughs> you know, in the, in the corner of the office. And uh, was a pro was very quick. You know, the item was coming. Someone was taking five to ten photos. Then moved the to the item to another person who was who had to do a little research about that specific item, and uh, putting it online on eBay. And then uh, once we mastered that uh, you know that entire process then it became so much easier and so and uh, yeah and then uh, it was incredible you know and but also we had to learn also for example make sure that uh, everyone was happy the customer was happy because also having a good rate you know was important too you know so that would bring more customers more people would come to our page because and uh, we are reliable, you know, and um, we sell good stuff, you know. And, um, so what were some of the specific things that you were selling? Anything from anything, just so you know, anything from cat food to adult uh, to toys. Oh, wow. So it didn't really have to directly relate to the movie. Anything you give to me, your hat, in your background that does paintings there, oh, I probably sell everything. You know, oh, okay. anything, anything, but uh, it's true that uh, we became later on, it became more, you now became pickier because with, you know, for example, books, you can't, you don't get much money by selling books unless if it's a collectible book, like a law or medical books, you know, because those books you can sell for, you know, some of them like a, over $200, you know. Yeah, but uh, books, you don't, in general, books, you don't, we got lots of books from people that we can just make like 30 cents, 20 cents and take so much of our, our time. Mm. We decided that there would be better elect electronics, uh, the best. For example, old cell phone, old iPhone, mm. you know, uh, old laptops, but also because we want to have uh, a variety of things on our, our eBay page, not just uh, electronics. Mm -hmm. We have other items too, but uh, and but also came things from that we didn't know was come from overseas. You know that people had in New York, then you know, and they donate to us. You know, and uh, so and uh, also rings, gold. You know, all kinds of things was so weird. You know, and uh, we had we had someone specialized with a little liquid. To, oh, is it a go oh, it's gold, it's gold. Or like, oh my God, it's gold, you know? <laughs> and sometimes people donate by, ask, I don't know, ask them. To, I don't think people really knew the value of those, you know, mm. of the items they gave to us because their parents pass away. And then uh, we got so many interesting things, you know? So were, were you getting uh, people donating things for you to sell as well? Yeah, no, we had, um, it for, we first we started work with our crew, crew and a cast. Mm -hmm. and asking them to if they had items or anything in their closets that was taking space, collecting dust, you know, they didn't know what to do with those items. And they knew, most of people, they knew they, there is a value, those, but they didn't want to throw it away. They didn't know what to do with it. So now we have a good cause. You give it to us, we sell on, online, and that the money goes to a good cause. And mm -hmm. you can get perks and also a stock deductible, you know? So... It's wonderful, right? It's a win-win situation for everyone. So we first started with our cast and our crew, but then again, the word went out and you know, everyone started talking about our eBay campaign. 
So a lot of people start calling us you now and uh, start, you know, and then we told them like, okay, just come to our office, drop the, 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 your stuff. And then um, we li- we're going to list it on our eBay. You know, again, I would say 30% of um, the things people donated to us went straight to the trash. We couldn't sell or was, we, we just, we had just too many. Mm. It was not worth it, you know, selling them. And then because we had so many things on eBay, we dropped the price because, you know, we have competition on mm. eBay. You know, you know, there are other people selling the same item you now out there, you know, in the country, you know. So we dropped the price you know, to a point that uh, we had the best, always the best deal. And keep in mind that we, go, we got those items for free. People donate. So we could actually afford to sell for much less than anybody else. Right. You know, and then because we have a system, you know, usually someone who has just one or two items to sell is too much of work to, you know, to go online and create an account and to sell one or two items. But we just, we had just, uh, we had the, the host um, infrastructure, you know, everyone worked with us. And uh, so we could easily, you know, put those, those items online and uh, sell them and pack and the ship, you know, and uh, yeah. Very interesting experience doing it. And then uh, I don't think uh, I would ever do a Kickstarter ever again. No, think about mm-hmm. that. You, know? you have, um, it's a good way to find um, a new audience without knowing people. Mm-hmm. You don't have to know people to sell stuff on eBay, you know, because the buyers, you know, are people who are looking for those items. You now you don't have to promote anything, just put online. And if someone is looking for that specific item, you know, and you have a good uh, price, you know, and they, and they also, of course, you know, assuming that uh, you have uh, your rating, you know, have to keep the rating, you know, in a, you know, good stand, you know, so, and they don't have to know people, you don't have to have uh, a huge network of people, you know, and um, so for, for us, it worked pretty well. And uh, I think, and uh, it, you, anyone could do it. And it doesn't have to be for film. It could be for eBay, my wedding, eBay, my college, eBay, anything, you know? Right. And then uh, obviously those, those after we did the successful campaign, those domains are not no longer available online, you know, because <laughs> yeah. someone out there, you no, know, I tried the other day, you know, it's no longer, they are no longer available. But I can create a different domain, you know, but for us, eBayMyFilm.com was a perfect domain. We are so happy that it was available. And then, um, because it's very catchy, you know. Let's switch gears for a minute. Let's let's talk about uh, the garden left behind a little bit. So you won the audience award at South by Southwest this yeah. last year. Um, yeah, how- two thousand nineteen actually. Two thousand nineteen, of course. I think. Uh, well, I mean, getting to South by was was huge for us because it's such a great festival, and uh, it gave us the validation. You know, like okay. It seems that we are on the right track, you know, and uh, they liked our film, you know, and, uh, and so many other festivals um, who actually wanted to, to have the world premiere, like Trebek and uh, San Francisco. But uh, but uh, once we got South by, they just dropped us. But uh, that's fine. That's how it works, you know. And uh, um, we, uh, South by was very important to us, you know, but uh, getting the award was something that uh, I was not expecting, you know, especially audience award. I didn't realize... Um, how much this story uh, of a trans woman living in New York City would actually connect with uh, a South by audience, you know, and I couldn't see that, you know. Um, so I was very happy with uh, um, when I learned that we got an audience award, you know, and that, uh, you know, and then, uh, listen, we capitalized on it, you know, <laughs> after, after we got it, you know, and then we went everywhere, you know, we had the winner, South by and a winner, you know, and, um, it was good for the film, for, you know, and it helped us so much uh, getting more free press, getting more attention, and that's what uh, an independent uh, film um, dreams, uh, they dream to have. What's the uh, distribution situation right now? Well, the film, we had uh, Dark Star Pictures bought the, the film, mm-hmm. and uh, we had the U.S. distribution because of COVID, everything has you know, changed, you know, and uh, we no longer had the theatrical, so we went straight to streaming, VOD, Amazon, um, Amazon Prime, then uh, Voodoo, and uh, Fandango, all the others, platforms, you know, so... Uh, 
It was good, you know, of course, you know, as a filmmaker, I would love to see my film played in a big screen. But I also understand that, uh, you know, we live in different world today, you know, and uh, yeah. and uh, it was not possible. Things might change in the future, but uh, and uh, but we didn't have that option. The film's coming out and uh, will be released in the UK uh, in May, in the end of May 26th. Nice. And then we go to, you know, uh, you know perhaps to other, you know, European countries, you know, and then I hope Brazil and uh, because I'm Brazilian and also Mexico because the main character, you know, she's Mexican. You know. So we hope to go to other uh, Central and South America countries, you know, and uh, uh, we see. And um, but I know it's just uh, because this is uh, I, I moved on to my next film, you know, and uh, so once the film get to that uh, stage, you know, and uh, it's on the hands of, uh, it is on the hands of uh, just, um, sales agents, you know, and let them deal with it, you know. And uh, at some point, you know, when it, when you get to that point that you your films are read out, you know, you just have to move on you yeah. to another project, you know. Let's talk a little bit about the the project. So, how did the the movie itself come about? How did you settle on this project? Well, well, just like all my films, The Guard Left Behind is about marginalized and the overlooked members of our society. You know, and uh, I'm a gay man myself. I am Latino, so I do understand what it means to be an outsider. You know, and um, so uh, and uh, today I'm glad that I'm in a position to make uh, an impact on that front. Not only by telling stories of people um, like myself, you know, um, who have to be Latino and a gay man, but also telling stories of other people who don't often see themselves on the big screen. So I want to keep telling stories about um, those people who don't have a voice. And, um, but I also I found that uh, for me, it's like a passion. You know? Like um, I, I love to discover um, even for myself, you know, when I hear a story that uh, inspires me, I won't take that story you know, to the big screen because I'm sure other people will be also inspired by those stories, you know. So, um, uh, but also it's, um, it's easy to get a free press, I have to say that, you know. And uh, when you have uh, a, a unique story, you know, it's unique to get free press. It's also, it's easy to get, because um, uh, we have a lot of uh, grants for our films. And now, and that's a good thing about uh, telling those stories. It might not be good for distribution because if a story is too marginalized or, or it's a small niche like uh, the girl left behind, it's about a Mexican trans woman, and uh, the audience is very tiny. But uh, but uh, we are pleased with the results. You now we got a lot out of this film. You now um, not only not only in terms of uh, getting to major film festivals and getting grants, uh, even the eBay campaign, but at so many other things that uh, we did that uh, we are very proud of, you know, like, like uh, for example, working with uh, uh, marginalized communities, giving, giving voices to those communities. It's very important uh, to me and to everyone involved. Yeah. So I was looking at your IMDb. So you've produced a lot of things. Um, how many features have you done at this point? This is my first feature film. Really? Okay. Wow, yeah. that's impressive. Yeah, this is my first feature film, and I did a lot of short films. And the reason for that is because I, uh, by producing other films, I realized that um, would be for me, um, I would have a short career if I had gone straight to my first feature film as opposed to do all the work I did with short films. Because the short films... Uh, a sort of a lab, you know, where prepares filmmakers to the big journey, which is making the first feature film. I spend a lot of time with my uh, doing short films. I learned so much about the craft, uh, uh, you know, but uh, most importantly, building my team, you know, mm -hmm. because by working those short films, I knew, I knew who, who was who, you know, and uh, who I could trust, you know, who I wanted to take with me on that, uh, you know, uh, journey, you know, and then, um, but also I treated uh, those short films as if they were like a feature film. Mm -hmm. you know? For example, I, I did the entire process, you know, I, I, you know, I got the star 
big stars. No, for example, my last short film will have two Academy nominees, Sally Kirkland and Bert Young, oh, working wow. on the film, in a short film, you know? And then, um, so right there, I learned so much about uh, working with stars, but uh, you know, working with uh, casting directors, you know, um, you have to make sure that you have the right, uh, right people, you know? You are surrounded by the, the best, the best people, you know, and uh, the be and the, the way to find out is by shooting, making short films, and then um, so my producers, if you see, you know, my short films, they are pretty much the same. The team is pretty much the same, you know. So it was a good experience working, making those short films because it was sort of a lab for me. It prepared me for the uh, for this for this big journey, which is a shooting a uh, my first my first future film. Also, we, my last short film, we got it, I got it, I think 140 or 150 film festivals. So again, I, I know I did everything I, for my, uh, for my future film, the same thing that I did for my short films. And that was a good way to understand the entire process. So, so there's no surprise. Now there are no surprises like, a, oh my God, I didn't know that. Well, uh, that's why I make short films. And uh, it, uh, it paved the way you now that we walked with uh, the future film. That's great. So what is uh, next for you? What's the, what's the next feature? Well, we have a three, actually three projects on, uh, in, the, uh, in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. We don't know which one is going to be next. Depends on many factors. Usually I depend on uh, a seed money. No. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I submit all those projects to foundations you now and uh, hoping that one of them you now would get uh, you now um, a big grant and uh, now and that grant is we use usually we use as a you know um, as a seed money you know to get an attorney to get an office and uh, to attach the first star that's what we do you know and uh, once we have those three things you now we have the office we have uh, uh, the attorney and um, and we have um, the first star and that's what you need actually to just go and uh, do whatever you want to do you know the rest is just like you know you start getting the crew and a cast because that's what you need actually to get the project uh, um, started if you're enjoying these little talks please consider supporting me on patreon all the cool kids are doing it but whatever you do, keep making movies.